good afternoon. Friends, it's now just 53 days from polling day for the Scottish election on the 6th of May. In two weeks' time, we will enter the official campaign period. But the reality is, the starting gun has already been fired. The battle is now underway. After 10 years as an MSP, the vast majority of that as party leader, I've seen a few elections in my time, and no two have ever been the same. And certainly, none will be like this one. Held under the shadow of a global pandemic, after a full year of restrictions that would previously have been thought unimaginable, and stripped of most of the usual means of electioneering, of door knocking, of street stalls and of rallies, this will be an election like no other. But its outcome could have profound consequences for our country as a whole, and for families the length and breadth of Scotland. We need to go into this election with a clear-eyed understanding of the facts on the ground, what's at stake and what we need to achieve. And the facts on the ground are these. Barring a complete implosion, the SNP are going to be re-elected as the largest party in the Scottish Parliament. Of that, there's little doubt. We can all wish it was otherwise, but wishing is all that it would be. All the evidence says so. But that doesn't mean that we pack up and go home. There is too much, far too much at stake. And I know, I know that every time an election comes around, politicians tell you that this is the most important one ever, that it's the biggest vote you will ever cast in your life. Well, I'm not going to disappoint. Because the result of the election on the 6th of May is crucial. The Nationalists may return as the largest party, but they can still be held in check. In fact, it is absolutely essential that they are. Because if there's no check on an SNP government after May, they will put their obsession with securing a second independence referendum above Scotland's national interest. At this uncertain time, the only priority, the only priority that our governments should have is to work together to manage the COVID crisis and to rebuild our country. But the SNP have made it clear that if they win a majority in May, they'll try and hold another independence referendum in short order. They've said it could come as soon as the second half of this year. And some of them, some of them are even pushing for an illegal wildcat referendum. Just think about that for a minute. In the midst of a global pandemic, when the only priority should be pulling together to defeat it, to get the country back on its feet, the SNP's priority is to divide us all over again. As we look ahead to the months and years of building an economic recovery, with people's jobs and businesses and livelihoods on the line, the SNP wants to focus to be on how to break our country apart. When our only thought should be of protecting those jobs, of saving those businesses, of helping our children catch up on the classes they've missed, dealing with the backlog of operations in our NHS, on getting Scotland back to normality, the SNP are instead itching to pull us all back to a referendum battle, which should be the last thing on our minds. Scotland can't afford another five years of this divisive, distracting, destructive SNP obsession. Not with so much else at stake. Not with the health, jobs, education and future of so many of our people to protect. So everyone who wants to help prevent an SNP majority in May and to stop another independence referendum so that Scotland can focus on recovery needs to know how their vote can achieve that. I know it can be achieved and I know how. Over the last few weeks, something in Scotland has changed. The nationalist bandwagon rolling unstoppably towards their dream of a second Indy Ref, is now backfiring. An SNP majority government, once seen as a nailed on near certainty, and for so long the outcome universally forecast amongst the pundits, now looks much less sure. There are a lot of different reasons for this. The SNP's poor record of delivery across our public services, they're increasingly high-handed attitude as a government that thinks it can do what it likes and get away with it, the increasing stench of sleaze and scandal, all of it is mounting up. But above all, people who are just concerned about their jobs, 
about their children's schooling, about the length of time their parents are waiting to get an operation, all the ordinary day-to-day -day worries, have simply wearied of the SNP's single-minded drive for that referendum. We've passed peak NAT, and more and more, Scotland is saying, enough. Remember those facts on the ground that I spoke about? Well, here's another. At the last election in 2016, the SNP fell just two seats short of an overall majority. And that derailed their drive for another independence referendum five years ago. And it was achieved because people right across Scotland who wanted to stop the SNP gave their party votes to the Scottish Conservatives. We did it together and we can do it again. And here are some more facts on the ground. Labour are in third place across Scotland and they've said they won't work with other parties to block the SNP. The Lib Dems are in fourth place and they can't effectively challenge the Nationalists. And the Greens? Well, the Greens have backed the SNP throughout this Parliament and they'll do it all over again if they're given the chance. And voting for smaller parties will only split the pro-union vote and help pro-independence MSPs get elected. So there's only one way to be sure. No matter who you vote for in your own constituency, and I want as many people as possible to vote for their local Conservative candidate, if you want to stop that SNP majority, you must cast your party vote on the peach-coloured ballot paper for the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party. No other vote can be sure of preventing an SNP majority and the independence referendum that they want to hold. So these are the facts at this election. The SNP may return the biggest group, but a majority nationalist government can be prevented. It is vital that majority is stopped because it's the only way to be certain that Scotland isn't dragged back into another independence referendum when we all need to be focusing on building a recovery from the pandemic. And casting your party vote for the Scottish Conservatives, even if you've never done it before, and even if this is just this once, is the only way to stop that SNP majority. I don't know what changes to the COVID rules will be announced between now and polling day and what campaign activities will be allowed or when. But know this, it has been a privilege to campaign alongside you down the years and whatever is allowed, even if it is only to keep hitting the phone banks as we have been doing, I'll be straining every sinew between now and polling day to help Douglas, his team and our candidates up and down the country. Because for me, this is the strongest team we've ever fielded. The greatest mix of new blood and old hands. Different ages, backgrounds, experiences and expertise. But every one of them committed to delivering for their community. Understanding the nature of service. Realising there's no substitute for hard work. And absolutely committed to putting the country first. Douglas and his team are bursting with ideas. On education, on the economy, the environment on housing and crime and victims' rights, on apprenticeships, on agriculture, on infrastructure, on building a better Scotland and working together within a united kingdom. It is a positive campaign, pulling people together and focusing on everything we can do as a nation. And it's a message I'm proud to help deliver to every house in Scotland. It is time to end the division. It is time to say no to another referendum. It is time to rebuild Scotland. And I know that with your support, we can. We've done it before. And with your vote for the Scottish Conservatives on the 6th of May, we can do it again. Thank you.